Welcome everyone. Let's talk about urban planning once again. Let's explore in this episode the challenges and solutions for studying people who leave state-subsidized housing in Ethiopia, in Morocco, and in South Africa. And I have invited um, a speaker today, Rafael Bayer, from TU Dortmund University, to explain why it's important to understand the reasons for their departure and how to overcome the challenges, some methodolog methodological challenges um, of studying this population. Rafael, welcome to our episode. Thanks for the introduction, Rodrigo. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be here. So it must be perhaps a little bit obvious, but let's start with the importance of why people leave this state-subsidized housing, which I would assume would help policymakers to design more effective housing programs, analyze vulnerable populations. So am I thinking correctly? Yeah, I think you're right on the right track, but uh, it's even going beyond that because mm -hmm. uh, if we are not studying uh, those people that are missing at the resettlement sites, so after um, they were resettled into towards new housing, then uh, we miss out an important uh, group and all our um, evaluation efforts are actually biased at the end of the day because we leave out a group that we have, uh, that we don't include at all in uh, into our uh, analysis mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so what was also, also a methodological mm -hmm. um, concern about it. Yeah. of course so what was the specific research gap so what was missing in the research uh, the biggest research gap is actually that there is almost uh, no uh, research that has ever dealt with people that left um, resettlement housing um, that is due to methodological challenges in finding uh, those people. So most uh, studies actually uh, who would like to evaluate the outcomes of uh, resettlement and public housing interventions are actually dealing with people that are living on the sites. We, that seems to be straightforward, <laughs> but it misses out those people that, that have left or could not afford or could, uh, didn't want to access um, uh, new housing. And um, that is that is um, that is the the starting point. So the research gap here is um, is then that it that we need to find a solution how to include this uh, population group so that we do not end at this point where we recognize that a large part of population is missing, but that we find ways to actually um, engage with these people. Uh, and study the, their personal experiences, their lived experiences, uh, their reasons for leaving and their perceptions towards uh, these resettlement and public housing interventions. Mm -hmm. A promising background. So let us know about the most important highlights, the findings of your study. Yeah, the most important highlights of this uh, paper are actually um, on the methodological side. So I'm uh, referring to three methodological uh, challenges. So how to actually find uh, people who left or who are not living at the resettlement sites and how can we link their the research that is uh, naturally of qualitative um, nature um, due to the, the the challenges in finding people, how can we link such in-depth um, um, research uh, with a more structural critique of uh, large-scale standardized housing uh, programs? And the third methodological uh, challenge that I address in, in this paper is how we can account for, for time in uh, such uh, research. Okay, so I'm curious to know more, and you can, if you go, uh, indicate specifically in the countries that you studied, so I, I'm curious to know more about policy implications or implications to individual lives. What can you tell us about that? Um, yeah, first of all, um, I think uh, what we found out is that um, uh, it needs a better and contextually embedded uh, sampling to find these people. And uh, it is clear that affordability seems to be a most crucial part of why people cannot um, stay emplaced in these uh, new housing. So affordability is crucial if uh, we think about public housing and resettlement uh, issues and to uh, about policy implications. But uh, from a methodological point of view, 
um, the policy uh, policy rec um, recommendations would also be not to focus only on the resettlement uh, sites if we want to evaluate and assess the outcomes of public housing and resettlement operations. Mm -hmm. um, so let's look at the what now. So what do we need to study more now? So more case studies, more cases with uh, uh, the resettling places you mentioned, a focus on the methodologies as you did. So what's yeah. that was now? Yeah, I think uh, most uh, or the most crucial part is actually to 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 now uh, f engage in comparative uh, studies that have um, or that that are analyzing the experiences of people um, that that left. Mm -hmm. So, what is their personal lived experiences, and uh, why did they not move into the houses, or why did, uh, couldn't they? Uh, move in into these these houses and these uh, reasons uh, should be actually in, uh, explored through um, in-depth analysis of housing pathways of particular people yeah? mm -hmm. and uh, if we then have a good number of um, analysis of housing pathways that produce lots of in-depth insights into people's uh, housing experiences then we are also able uh, to engage in a structural critique of large-scale housing interventions mm -hmm. and um, that would bring us to the point to to be more confident about uh, calling for more choice uh, in the design uh, of large-scale standardized uh, housing projects. Mm -hmm. Perfect, some tips for future research. Rafael, this has been a very straight-to-the-point episode as we like. Mm -hmm. um, if someone just uh, joined our conversation now didn't listen to anything we've been talking about and you wanted that person to remember one, two sentences about this talk, what would it be? <laughs> um, that uh, It is not that straightforward to analyze the effects of public housing and resettlement programs if you only study the population that is actually present on the site and that inhabits the houses that were provided by the state. We also have to include in our into our analysis people that have left those houses again because they couldn't afford uh, to be uh, to remain in place or because they didn't want to to remain in these houses and also those people who were never actually moving into these houses and only if we include these so-called missing people of public housing and resettlement projects uh, uh, our evaluation and uh, assessments of the impact of resettlement uh, and large-scale housing intervention is complete and comprehensive. Great episode. Rafael, thank you very much. Thanks, you're welcome. For those who are watching us on YouTube, you can find all the resources, all the materials of this conversation, including the study that based, served as based for this conversation on the Let's Talk About Urban Planning website. Alternatively to the video, you can also um, listen to this episode wherever you get your podcast and follow us on Twitter at Cogitatio LTA.